Hi guys, uh, welcome to the third video of multi-threading playlist. So this video will be all about thread local and how we can use thread local in our application. So let's get started. So before starting, if you have not watched first two videos, I will highly recommend you to watch the first two videos to understand the basics of multi-threading so that your foundation will be strong because from this video we will cover thread local and in next video we will cover virtual threads and many more concepts like this. So let's get started on thread local. So let's see the scenario first and then we will see what are the benefits of thread local and we will then jump into the code level to understand how to make use of thread local in your application. So let's say if you have any web application. So let's say you have web, appli web application and inside your web application you are making threads for each user. So I will say let's say thread one, thread two, thread three okay so it can be up to thread n so if 100 users are hitting your web application right uh, at the same time so it will lead to 100 threads so same if uh, 1 million users are coming so it will create 1 million threads in your code right uh, so let's say you have three threads here and i will just put the user icon here so let's say user one user two user three so all are hitting the web application and in the code three threads are getting created and each thread now you want like each thread should have some user id attached to it right like if thread one is processing the request for user one so this user might have some username or user id so you want that user id to attach to thread one okay so one way is as we saw in the first two videos like you can make use of the shared variables but that but in that case, it can lead to like a lot of synchronization issues. Developer have to handle in the code uh, use of volatile keywords, synchronized blocks, atomic classes. So all that complexity comes into picture for uh, developers, right? But what Java says is if you have this type of requirement, you can make use of the thread local class in Java. So each thread can make use of thread local class to store their local copies of variable. So thread one can store user one in this and it can also get user one from the thread local. And this user one will only be fetched by thread one and it will not be visible to thread two or thread three. So it's completely thread safe environment. So same way user two, so thread two can store the local copy in the thread local and it can also get his own copy from the thread local right so in this way we can make use of thread local which makes which makes the developers life so easy so they don't have to handle all that shared variables uh, issues so in this way you can use thread local and instead of user id it can be anything it can be your database connection uh, it can be your a thread context so it can be anything you want to store which is local to each thread so that is the main purpose of thread local so if i will open some notes here so thread local helps in creating variables that can be read and written by the same thread these variables are unique to each thread and are not shared among different threads it's particular handy in scenarios like we saw now to handle like user sessions or database connections user ids and all that stuff you can easily do with thread local thing and it also improves performance by avoiding synchronization overhead in multi-threaded environment because uh, using all that uh, synchronization things right uh, lead to performance issues also and can also lead to uh, other issues as well and each thread holds its own copy of the variable so you really have to be careful like while implementing the thread local because if the reference is stored for longer right it can lead to memory leaks so that's why uh, developers have to really careful while implementing the thread local in their code. But overall, there are a lot of benefits to it. It's being used in the many real use case applications to manage the thread context or user sessions or database connections. So this is the flow of thread local. So now let's jump to the code level. So I've already written the code. So from code level, it's not that hard to be honest. Uh, so we will quickly go through the code. So if you can see here right so what i am doing is i am creating the thread local user so i am creating the thread local of a long type 
and in the first request if you see i am using this thread local to set the user id so i have just for this example i have just two hard coded uh, user ids here so for the first thread i am putting the user id using dot set method so if i say here dot set so if you see when i do dot set it already knows like it's of type long because we already defined uh, there so we can pass any long value here so i will pass user id here and after that your thread started now you know this thread is for this user id and then you can process your logic and all that things you can do according to your application use case and then if you see here you can easily get you the user id by using dot get method so when you do dot get right so you are not passing anything else so thread local knows like if this request is requesting me dot get so i will return the copy of this thread only so i should not return the copy of any other threads so you can use dot get and once your work is done then you can always use dot remove method right it's very good practice to remove thread local objects once you are done with that okay so if i will after removing if i will again do dot get so ideally we will get a null here okay so same thing i am doing it uh, there thread local user id local one so again i can use dot get here and again i can use dot get here after remove which will give us the null so here so we did so for refresh purpose we did three things we first declared our thread local of the long type it can be any type it depends on your application use case and then we used dot set method then we used dot get method and then in the end we use dot remove method okay so these three things we used for both the threads and once i will start i will run this one so let me remove this code so we will discuss this after running this so i will run this code so you will be able to see so first thread started for this user then second thread started so first thread logic completed then we used dot remove and that's why it's giving us null here right because after remove if you will use get that means uh, it will always give you null because it have removed that from the thread local uh, memory and this is how it work so hope it's clear now so the last concept is we in some cases we use like parent and child threads right so in that case we use inheritable thread local where the parent can pass the the variables to the child class so what i mean is so let's say i'm creating inheritable thread local of string type and i am starting one thread and inside that i am setting this inheritable thread local value to instagram so now this value can be accessed by the child thread using dot get method of inheritable thread local okay so you so there are two things now so one is thread local one is inheritable thread local so inheritable thread local value can be read by the child thread but if i will set up only the value of thread local right so let's say set 1 2 3 4 5 any value right so this value will not be visible to child thread also so is this value is only limited to the parent thread but in some cases if you want child thread to also get some value which is getting set by the parent class you can use this inheritable thread local so if i will run this one and if i will say here print thread local so this will return null because this will refer to the thread local of this thread not the thread 3 which is the parent thread okay so if i will run this code so you will see here this dot get is giving the instagram value right uh, so because it's a inheritable thread local but user thread user id thread local dot get is giving null because we have not set anything for this thread yeah but if same line i will put it here right outside uh, in the parent thread so it should ideally give the same value so if i will run this one so you can see instagram and null and before this this line got printed which is giving us this uh, thread local variable okay so this is all about thread local so it's very easy to implement so you should know like how to implement and you should always use 
dot remove method and then you can make use of inheritable thread local whenever there is a parent and child threads logic in your application so that's it for this video and in next video we will talk about uh, running virtual threads in java 21 and how they are different from platform threads and all that things so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content